anyone have any questions concerning council member Brock? Sure. Why not? So I, uh, I know many of our residents kept saying, just vote no. And uh, you don't need to do this. The state can't do anything to you. You're a city, damn it. You're supposed to take care of us. So over the last few days, I think people were also emailing me from city staff saying, here are the dire warnings if someone does vote no. So can you go over in really clear, succinct, loud terms, what are the penalties if the city council, and I know you went over these earlier, but I want to make sure everyone understands that our choice is maybe uh, helping destroy the city by voting no, or at least keeping some control by voting yes. And, and I know that many people don't understand that out in, in our residents. They just feel our city council is responsible for zoning. Our city council is responsible for growth. And we're supposed to take care of moderating it. One person wrote me today and said, damn it, you were elected for slow growth. Well, someone else would say they didn't vote for me because I didn't want enough growth. So what I want to make sure that I understand and residents understand is where are we? Tell us what would happen if this city council with four, three days left on the state deadline decided to protest by not voting yes. Uh, certainly, and I'm, I'm happy to start and the city attorney can augment um, uh, the, this response as well. Um, so you can see on the slide here um, the consequences that are already in effect because we have been out of compliance. Can you explain, I, I'm sorry to interrupt you, can you explain what is a builder's remedy project? Because I saw that term a lot this last week. What is it? A, a, absolutely. So uh, builder's remedy projects, and this is a kind of colloquial term, um, it, it's actually a section that lives in the Housing Accountability Act. Um, and basically what it is, it is um, th the city is not allowed to disapprove a housing project that includes um, at least 20% um, units on site as affordable to lower income households or 100% moderate income units. Um, and that project does not have to meet uh, the zoning ordinance uh, standards or the general plan land use designation. And this is a special allowance that is only in effect when a city is out of compliance on its housing element. And this is a state mandate or hammer? That is correct. A state hammer? That is correct, yeah. This, this is a stick, <laughs> yeah, um, to put it mildly. Um, and, and I saw, I think I, we received a memo, which I'm not allowed, I don't know if we're allowed to talk about. Yes, no? Too late now. Well, I'm not talking, I haven't mentioned. <laughs> There was a memo from the city manager. I, I don't remember. There was something about the amount of units that. Well, yeah, the, the summary is that, yes, we could see 2,000 unit uh, projects going through without the council having the ability to weigh in. And the, that's the bottom and line. And planning commission, city council and staff would not be able to slow or stop those projects. Now, I think I saw one that was a pretty tall building as well. 15-story buildings, yes. How many stories? You can see 15-story buildings, yes. And and those yeah. have been submitted as if we don't adopt this. So build, uh, cons developers are praying that we say no so that they have a chance to build this. I, I'm not sure. I Well, no, Gleam, I'm not sure I'm right. So that's what I'm asking. I'm asking a question, Gleam. You're going to have to let him ask his question. And then you well, can... I mean, but I think I can clarify because he sounds a little yeah. confused. So we actually have Builders Remedy projects already submitted. Last count I heard was 12. And it's my understanding that HCD has sent a letter to one of the attorneys for one of those Builders Remedy projects saying that once preliminary approval is filed, and that's the first step. It's the $400 fee and back of a napkin. This is what our building. 
even if we adopt a compliant housing element tonight, and even if HCD certifies it, those 12 projects or however many are in the hopper will still be able to go forward as builders remedy projects. So we're already, to put it lightly, 12, unit, 12 projects in the hole. So that's the that 4, we can't do anything. Some odd units. No, 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 no. They're not that many. But okay. but my point is that every day we delay this, it gives someone an opportunity to lob in a preliminary application. And when they lob in that preliminary application, according to HCD, they have effectively, to use a legal term, vested their right to follow through with the builder's remedy project. So, for example, if we adopt the housing element this evening, that will not negate those 12 applications that have already been submitted. So every day we go by, we run the risk of additional builder's remedy projects. 15-story project. Yes. Yeah. That, I mean, those are already in, and HCD has said they're going forward. No matter what we do tonight, because they beat the clock. But every day we don't adopt something, then more people get the opportunity to beat the clock. Well, before before we go forward, so has HCD said we're stuck with these projects? Yes, they 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 sent us a letter in response to a technical assistance request. So this came from the Housing Accountability Unit in response to a question for a from a developer regarding a specific address. And the question was, and so this is the confluence of two state laws. It's this uh, Housing Accountability Act and then an SB 330. Right, and the question is, SB 330 is a two-step process. You have to file a preliminary application to vest yourself into the standards in effect at the time you submit that application, and then you have six months to file the formal application to then continue your processing down that path. So the question to HCD was, hey, if I file a preliminary SB 330 application for a 15-story building today, you know, and the city votes, and, you know, they get into compliance on October 15th, you know, basically, like, do I get to keep processing it? Do I vest the city's uh, period of noncompliance, you know, as long as I file this preliminary application in this period when the city is out of compliance? And HED's response was yes. So as long as they submitted that preliminary application to lock in the city's period of noncompliance, they are allowed to process that application, you know, even, so in other even words, if we get into compliance. In other words, before HCD actually stamps this and sends it back to us on Friday, anybody else could rush in tomorrow morning and Thursday morning. Shh. I know, I, I hear what you're saying, but I, I'm, I, yes, I know, I just, I just opened the damn door. But, but, I'm, but I want residents to know how our hands are tied. And your hands are tied as our planning department. Our hands are tied as a city council. Mm -hmm. So it, it, once they stamp it Friday, if they stamp it Friday. They are going to stamp it. <laughs> well, they, they may. So the question, they promised they would, sort of. So <laughs> the question is, once it gets back to us, then we're once again able to slightly restrict those projects. Right. The, and I'm using slightly, I'm not. Right, the, this, this, this provision of the builder's remedy would not be available to new applications, um, you know, once you're in compliance. Now I do want to caution, is like once you adopt the housing element, you have to implement it, right? It is possible for the city to fall out of compliance later and then you know, you're, you're back in the same boat again. So, but if, if we do get that letter from HTD by October 15th, certifying the housing element, you know, the door closes um, on the submittal of a new application. My follow-up question, because residents have also, they've, they've asked me this for a year and a half now. Um, they said, well, what if you don't do it? You just sue the state. It was interesting because everyone says, hey, we spend too much money on legal fees, and all of a sudden they're going, let's spend money. Let's sue. So what's the track record so far from other cities that have sued the state? Zero. Not a single suit has, has uh, been a success. And there, are, there is a suit ongoing for SB 9 and 10, but that's not arena standard suit, and it's not to negate the authority of housing and community development in the state, correct? That you know of. No, I'm not. That I know of. Okay. So 
the, the bottom line for the residents out there, there are some residents that are cheering that we're going to do this, and there are other residents going, oh, my God, you're going to ruin the city. And then there are the people who are saying, we're going to sue you because you aren't doing enough. Yeah. There's, there's it's a 360 degree, yes. Yeah, so I, I think the part that I am I want to make as clear as possible is the authority to to manage our city in zoning matters has largely been usurped by the state of California. And it doesn't matter what we do up here, the state and then the county have authority over us, and then we're the city. So there are certain things that we don't have that ability just to say no to. We need to implement this and do the best we can to mitigate as many of the consequences to our residents who want a beachside city that we possibly can. Would that put it? Well, you're asking me, but uh, uh, look, I sure. agree. We don't have a choice. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll rest. I, I just wanted to make sure that... Make a motion. <laughs> I don't want to make that motion. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, yes, okay. Uh, 